Let's take you to Ottawa. Here is the Finance Minister, Christian Freeland. Let's listen. Indépendant du gouvernement, et nous respectons cette we indépendance. Respect that independence. La, la tradition pionnière du Canada. The pioneering tradition of Canada when it comes to the independence of central banks is respected across the world. The solidity and independence of our institutions, including the Bank of Canada, are one of the fundamental elements that make Canada a safe and reliable country Second, for businesses. I want to underscore for Canadians why they should be confident in the strength and resilience of the Canadian economy. Canada saw the strongest economic growth in the G7 in 2022, and in the first quarter of this year, our economy grew by 3.1%, the strongest in the G7. Just this morning, the OECD predicted that the Canadian economy will see the fastest rate of growth on average in the G7 for 2023 and 2024. In April, after we tabled the budget, S&P reiterated Canada's AAA credit rating, and Canada has both the lowest deficit to GDP and the lowest net debt to GDP ratio in the G7 lower than our two other G7 AAA rated peers, the US and Germany, and also lower than some other major AAA rated economies like the Netherlands. Most important of all, there are 900,000 more Canadians working today than there were working before COVID first hit. In the first four months, of 2023, the Canadian economy added nearly a quarter of a million jobs. We have now recovered 129% of the jobs that were lost in the first months of the pandemic, compared to just 115% in the United States. And at 5%, Canada's unemployment rate remains near its historic low. That really matters in the lives of Canadians across the country. La récession de 2008 était the 2008 recession was not as intense as the COVID recession, but it marked a generation of young people. We were determined that this would not reoccur. Thanks to the continued support that we provided to employment during the pandemic, we achieved that. After the 2008 financial crisis, it took more than nine years for Canada's unemployment rate to return to pre-crisis levels. After the devastating peak during COVID, it only took two Canadian years. The economy is strong and resilient, and more Canadians have good jobs today than ever before. A strong and resilient economy with plentiful job opportunities is good for Canadian workers, and it is good for families across our country. Inflation has fallen from its peak of 8.1% last June to 4.4% in April. That is lower than the UK at 8.7%, lower than Germany at 7.2%, and lower than inflation in Australia, Norway, France, Denmark, the Netherlands, the United States, and the EU overall. The Bank of Canada has predicted that inflation will fall to 3% this summer. We're not there yet, but we have made some real meaningful progress, which is being felt in people's lives. Getting through COVID was really hard. Getting through the deep recession caused by COVID was really hard. And today, getting through the global inflation caused by COVID and Putin's invasion continues to be hard. But there is no country in the world that is navigating these challenges more effectively
than Canada, and there is no country in the world better positioned for a soft landing than Canada. We are very close to the end of this difficult time and to a return to low, stable inflation and strong, steady growth. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take Alors, your questions. What do you say about to many Canadians who are fearing their mortgages go up if the government doesn't do anything? That's a very important question. It's a question and an issue that really concerns me. I do understand that today these good things and strong part of the Canadian economy is the job market. We know that there are a lot of jobs and people who want to work can work. La pire angulaire de notre politique to me, that's the cornerstone of our economic policy. Pour chacun et chacune, I know that for each person, clé having a job is key Mais to having a good life. But you asked a very important question. Y a toujours deux enjeux. That's because there's always two issues that really create difficulties for Canadians. On one hand, inflation, and on the other hand, high interest rates. Je suis absolument confiante. I am totally confident, and Canadians should also be confident that inflation is coming down. We will reach inflation levels that are stable and normal. That is the duty of the Bank of Canada. We must all be confident and convinced that the Bank of Canada will do its job. But I am aware that the tool that the Bank of Canada has to do that is interest rates. High interest rates are creating difficulties for Canadians, for Canadian families. But one must understand and know that we're nearing the end of this difficult period. Every month, we get closer to the end. Now, about your question, the important thing for the government when it comes to fiscal measures and policy is to take a balanced approach. That's what we did with this year's budget as well as last year's. On one hand, we do understand that we need to take a compassionate approach and help the most vulnerable. We are there and will be there. Grocery rebates will be reaching Canadian households on July 5th, and that's the right thing to do. But on the other hand, we need to take a responsible approach when it comes to fiscal policies in order not to throw fuel on the fire of inflation. This is hitting the people, uh, the middle class and those working hard to join it are getting hit the hardest by this because their mortgage prices are going up. Uh, older people, more established, not so much an issue for them if they paid off their homes. What's your message to the people who now are questioning whether or not they can continue to afford their houses or enter the market uh, at all? Look, I think that is an extremely important question. And there are a lot of Canadians who are anxious right now and who will be concerned when they see this step taken by the Bank of Canada. That is entirely understandable. And I absolutely understand that anxiety and that concern. 
I do want to point to, from my perspective, the core strength and the resilience of the Canadian economy, and that is the extremely important jobs market. The fact that we have 900,000 more jobs than we had before COVID first hit is so important. And that, you know, having a job, having a good job is the key to the well-being of every single Canadian and their family. It's the key to being able to pay your rent or your mortgage. And that is a strength which we have and Canadians can count on. But I absolutely understand the concerns Canadians have with mortgages today. And I understand the concerns Canadians have with inflation. And what I really think is important also for us to bear in mind is we are coming to the end of this difficult path out of the COVID economy. Um, we are seeing inflation coming down. It ha had a, hit a peak of 8.1 down to 4.4, and the Bank of Canada today reiterated the prediction that it gets down to 3% in the summer. That is a very big deal, very, very important for Canadians. And I do think it's important for us to all bear in mind the destination, right? The destination is stable, low inflation, and steady, strong growth. And that is where, that, that is the direction that we are heading. The path is very, very clear. And Canada is moving more effectively along that path than any other country I can name. There are some Canadians that have very good jobs, but still can't make ends meet. And you tell them that things will end soon. What about people who don't have access to the grocery rebates or other measures that you mentioned? What do you have to say to those people? That's perhaps the most important question and as well the hardest. You're right. These are very difficult times for Canadians. It's very difficult for Canadians in the middle class. Je veux rassurer les Canadiens I want to reassure Canadians with two important chose facts. Sur, que je dois souligner, the first thing that I would like to highlight travail, is that having a job fort, and having a strong employment la market Chose la plus pour chacun et is chacun. the most important thing for each person. And this et is the thing that helps us the most. La Since the COVID, recession during COVID, fort, we have returned to a historically strong chose, job market. Oui, and that's good oui, news. On, on the second thing is et that, yes, we are going through a difficult time. Élevé, and high inflation rates has made it very difficult. The good thing is that inflation that was at 8.1% is now 4.4%. And the good news from the Bank of Canada today is that the bank has announced will be at 3% by this summer. That's good news. Yes, for the time being, the tool that the bank is using in order to reach that level of inflation is creating extra expenses for Canadians. That is the reality. But we are now closer than ever to the end of this extraordinarily difficult time. Can you look ahead to when the government of Canada divests and say whether you expect the government will take a loss or realize a profit on that divestment? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, and uh, as you may have seen, uh, there was some interesting um, research from Bank, uh, from BMO and uh, from Scotiabank this week out about TMX. 
Um, we are nearing the completion of this project, which is very important for Canada's economic sovereignty. What we're seeing already is the closer we get to completion, the less of a penalty Canada is paying in terms of price for not controlling our own natural resources. So the project is already delivering economic benefit. And when it is complete, it will give us real economic sovereignty and a real economic benefit. We have been very clear that the government does not intend to be the long-term owner of the asset, um, that there will be a divestment process. Uh, we are very focused on Indigenous participation. I think that is fair and just. And what we saw from the market analysts this week is that there is real market interest in this rare and valuable piece of infrastructure.